Chapters 1 through 5 of 1 Samuel, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth Aim Zophim, of the hill country of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city from year to year to worship and to sacrifice unto Jehovah, of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, priests unto Jehovah, were there. And when the day came that Elkanah sacrificed, he gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah he gave a double portion, for he loved Hannah. But Jehovah had shut up her womb, and her rival provoked her sore to make her fret because Jehovah had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of Jehovah, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept, and did not eat. And Elkanah her husband said unto her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest was sitting upon his seat by the doorpost of the temple of Jehovah, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto Jehovah, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Jehovah of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child. Then I will give him unto Jehovah all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before Jehovah, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I poured out my soul before Jehovah. Count not thy handmaid for a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and my provocation have I spoken hitherto. to. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find favor in thy sight. So the woman went her way, and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early, and worshipped before Jehovah, and returned, and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and Jehovah remembered her. And it came to pass, when the time was come about, that Hannah conceived, and bare a son, and she called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of Jehovah. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto Jehovah the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before Jehovah, and there abide for ever. And Elkanah her husband said unto her, do what seemeth thee good, tarry until thou have weaned him. Only Jehovah establish his word. So the woman tarried and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks and one ephah of meal and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of Jehovah in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew the bullock, and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto Jehovah. 
for this child I prayed, and Jehovah hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have granted him to Jehovah. As long as he liveth, he is granted to Jehovah, and he worshipped Jehovah there. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 And Hannah prayed, and said, My heart exulteth in Jehovah, my horn is exalted in Jehovah, my mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as Jehovah, for there is none besides thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Jehovah is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry have ceased to hunger. Yea, the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children languisheth. Jehovah killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to Sheol, and bringeth up. Jehovah maketh poor, and maketh rich. He bringeth low, he also lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. He lifteth up the needy from the dunghill, to make them sit with princes, and inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are Jehovah's, and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his holy ones, but the wicked shall be put to silence in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. They that strive with Jehovah shall be broken to pieces. Against them will he thunder in heaven. Jehovah will judge the ends of the earth, and he will give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah, to his house. And the child did minister unto Jehovah before Eli the priest, now the sons of Eli were base men. They knew not Jehovah. And the custom of the priests with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was boiling with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took therewith. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Yea, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have boiled flesh of thee, but raw. And if the man said unto him, They will surely burn the fat first, and then take as much as thy soul desireth. Then he would say, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. And the sin of the young men was very great before Jehovah, for the men despised the offering of Jehovah. But Samuel ministered before Jehovah, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little robe, and brought it to him from year to year, when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, and said, Jehovah give thee seed of this woman, for the petition which was asked of Jehovah. And they went unto their own home. And Jehovah visited Hannah, and she conceived, and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before Jehovah. Now Eli was very old, and he heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how that they lay with the women that did service at the door of the tent of meeting. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make Jehovah's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, God shall judge him. But if a man sin against Jehovah, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because Jehovah was minded to slay them. And the child Samuel grew on, and increased in favor, both with Jehovah and also with men. And there came a man of God unto Eli, and said unto him, Thus saith Jehovah, Did I reveal myself unto the house of thy father, when they were in Egypt, in bondage to Pharaoh's house? 
And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up unto mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people? Therefore Jehovah, the God of Israel, saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me for ever. But now Jehovah saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come, that I will cut off thine arm, and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thy house. And thou shalt behold the affliction of my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thy house for ever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thy heart, and all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be the sign unto thee, that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas. And one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest, that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed for ever. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left in thy house shall come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a loaf of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's offices, that I may eat a morsel of bread. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 and the child Samuel ministered unto Jehovah before Eli. And the word of Jehovah was precious in those days. There was no frequent vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place. Now his eyes had begun to wax dim so that he could not see. And the lamp of God was not yet gone out. And Samuel was laid down to sleep in the temple of Jehovah, where the ark of God was. That Jehovah called Samuel, and he said, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And Jehovah called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know Jehovah, neither was the word of Jehovah yet revealed unto him. And Jehovah called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And Eli perceived that Jehovah had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Jehovah, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And Jehovah came, and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And Jehovah said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. And that day I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from the beginning even unto the end. For I have told him that I will judge his house for ever, for the iniquity which he knew, because his sons did bring a curse upon themselves, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated with sacrifice, nor offering for ever. And Samuel lay until the morning, and opened the doors of the house of Jehovah, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that Jehovah hath spoken unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he spake unto thee. 
And Samuel told him every wit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is Jehovah. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and Jehovah was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of Jehovah. And Jehovah appeared again in Shiloh, for Jehovah revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of Jehovah. End of chapter 3. Chapter 4. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle, and encamped beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army in the field about four thousand men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath Jehovah smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of Jehovah out of Shiloh unto us, that it may come among us and save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, and they brought from thence the ark of the covenant of Jehovah of hosts, who sitteth above the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of Jehovah came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of Jehovah was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there hath not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all manner of plagues in the wilderness. Be strong, and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men, and fight. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man to his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army, and came to Shiloh the same day, with his clothes rent, and with earth upon his head. And when he came low, Eli was sitting upon his seat by the wayside, watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man hasted, and came and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were set so that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, How went the matter, my son? And he that brought the tidings answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and there hath been also a great slaughter among the people, and thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell from off his seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck brake, and he died, for he was an old man, and heavy and he had judged Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Phinehas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and brought forth, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast brought forth a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. End of chapter 4. Chapter 5. Now, the Philistines had taken the ark of God, 
and they brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. And the Philistines took the ark of God, and brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of Jehovah. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of Jehovah, and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands lay cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore neither the priests of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. But the hand of Jehovah was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with tumors, even Ashdod and the borders thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel thither. And it was so, that after they had carried it about, the hand of Jehovah was against the city, with a very great discomfiture. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great, and tumors break out upon them. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. They sent therefore and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines, and they said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel, and let it go again to its own place, that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly discomfiture throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men that died not were smitten with the tumors. And the cry of the city went up, to heaven. End of chapter 5. Chapters 6 through 10 of 1 Samuel, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 6. And the ark of Jehovah was in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners, saying, What shall we do with the ark of Jehovah? Show us wherewith we shall send it to its place. And they said, If ye send away the ark of the God of Israel, send it not empty, but by all means return him a trespass offering. Then ye shall be healed, and it shall be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. Then said they, What shall be the trespass offering which we shall return to him? And they said, Five golden tumors, and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines, for one plague was on you all, and on your lords. Wherefore ye shall make images of your tumors, and images of your mice that mar the land, and ye shall give glory unto the God of Israel. Peradventure he will lighten his hand from off you, and from off your gods, and from off your land. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts, as the Egyptians and Pharaoh harden their hearts? When he had wrought wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go, and they departed? Now therefore take and prepare you a new cart, and two milch kine, on which there hath come no yoke, and tie the kine to the cart, and bring their calves home from them. And take the ark of Jehovah, and lay it upon the cart, and put the jewels of gold which ye return him for a trespass offering, in a coffer by the side thereof, and send it away that it may go. And see, if it goeth up by the way of its own border to Beth Shemesh, then he hath done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that smote us, it was a chance that happened to us. And the men did so and took two milch kine, and tied them to the cart, and shut up their calves at home. And they put the ark of Jehovah upon the cart, and the coffer with the mice of gold, and the images of their tumors, 
and the kine took the straight way by the way to Beth Shemesh. They went along the highway, lowing as they went, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them unto the border of Beth Shemesh. And they of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. And they lifted up their eyes, and saw the ark, and rejoiced to see it. And the cart came into the field of Joshua the Beth Shemite, and stood there where there was a great stone. And they claved the wood of the cart, and offered up the kind for a burnt offering unto Jehovah. And the Levites took down the ark of Jehovah, and the coffer that was with it, wherein the jewels of gold were, and put them on the great stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed sacrifices the same day unto Jehovah. And when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron the same day. And these are the golden tumors which the Philistines returned for a trespass offering unto Jehovah. For Ashdod, one. For Gaza, one. For Ashkelon, one. For Gath, one. For Ekron, one. And the golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines, belonging to the five lords, both of fortified cities and of country villages, even unto the great stone whereon they set down the ark of Jehovah, which stone remaineth unto this day, in the field of Joshua the Beth Shemite. And he smote of the men of Beth Shemesh, because they had looked into the ark of Jehovah. He smote of the people seventy men, and fifty thousand men. And the people mourned, because Jehovah had smitten the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before Jehovah, this holy God? And to whom shall he go up from us? And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of kirith Jerim, saying, The Philistines have brought back the ark of Jehovah. Come ye down, and fetch it up to you. End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 And the men of kirith Jerim came, and fetched up the ark of Jehovah, and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill, and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of Jehovah. And it came to pass from the day that the ark abode in kirith Jerim, that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after Jehovah. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto Jehovah with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtaroth from among you, and direct your hearts unto Jehovah, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away the Baalim and the Ashtaroth, and served Jehovah only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto Jehovah. And they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before Jehovah, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against Jehovah. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah, and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto Jehovah our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a whole burnt offering unto Jehovah. And Samuel cried unto Jehovah for Israel. And Jehovah answered him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But Jehovah thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines, and discomfited them, and they were smitten down before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah, and pursued the Philistines, and smote them, until they came under beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone, and set it between Mizpah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto too hath Jehovah helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more within the border of Israel. And the hand of Jehovah was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron even unto Gath. And the border thereof did Israel deliver out of the hand of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life, and he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah, and he judged Israel in all those places. 
and his return was to Ramah, for there was his house, and there he judged Israel, and he built there an altar unto Jehovah. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and they said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto Jehovah, and Jehovah said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not be king over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, in that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice. How be it? Thou shalt protest solemnly unto them, and shalt show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of Jehovah unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them unto him for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And they shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint them unto him for captains of thousands, and captains of fifties. And he will set some to plough his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and the instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be perfumers, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men, and your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your flocks, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day, because of your king whom ye shall have chosen, you. And Jehovah will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to hearken unto the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of Jehovah. And Jehovah said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. End of chapter 8 Chapter 9 Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekorath, the son of Aphiah, the son of a Benjamite, a mighty man of valor. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he, from his shoulders and upward. He was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise. Go seek the asses. And he passed through the hill country of Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. When they were come to the land of Zuth, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return, lest my father leave off caring for the asses and be anxious for us. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is a man that is held in honor. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can tell us concerning our journey, whereon we go. Then said Saul to his servant, But, behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, 
and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again, and said, Behold, I have in my hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the man of God, to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he said, Come and let us go to the seer, for he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. As they went up the ascent to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water, and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is. Behold, he is before thee. Make haste now, for he is come today into the city. For the people have a sacrifice today in the high place. As soon as ye are come into the city, ye shall straightway find him, before he goeth up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that are bidden. Now, therefore, get you up, for at this time ye shall find him. And they went up to the city, and as they came within the city, behold, Samuel came out toward them, to go up to the high place. Now, Jehovah had revealed unto Samuel a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be prince over my people Israel, and he shall save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, Jehovah said unto him, Behold, the man of whom I spake to thee, the same shall have authority over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is? And Samuel answered Saul, and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and in the morning I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thy heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And for whom is all that is desirable in Israel? Is it not for thee and for all thy father's house? And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou to me after this manner? And Samuel took Saul and his servant, and brought them into the guest chamber, and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, who were about thirty persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the thigh, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which hath been reserved, I set it before thee, and eat, because unto the appointed time hath it been kept for thee. For I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, he communed with Saul upon the housetop. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called to Saul on the housetop, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out both of them, he and Samuel abroad. As they were going down at the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us, and he passed on. But stand thou still first, that I may cause thee to hear the word of God. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 Then Samuel took the vial of oil, and poured it upon his head, and kissed him, and said, Is it not that Jehovah hath anointed thee to be prince over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre, in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and, lo, thy father hath left off caring for the asses, and is anxious for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the oak of Tabor, and there shall meet thee there three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hand. 
After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a band of prophets coming down from the high place, with a psaltery, and a timbrel, and a pipe, and a harp, before them. And they will be prophesying, and the Spirit of Jehovah will come mightily upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion shall serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings, and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry, till I come unto thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so, that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a band of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied with the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, And who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw that they were not found, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found. But concerning the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. And Samuel called the people together unto Jehovah, to Mizpah. And he said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith Jehovah, the God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all the kingdoms that oppressed you. But ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saveth you out of all your calamities and your distresses. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before Jehovah by your tribe and by your thousands. So Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken. And he brought the tribe of Benjamin near by their families. And the family of the Matrites was taken, and Saul the son of Kish was taken. But when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they asked of Jehovah further, Is there yet a man to come hither? And Jehovah answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the baggage. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom Jehovah hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, Long live the king! Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom, and wrote it in a book, and laid it up before Jehovah. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went to his house to Gibeah, and there went with him the host whose hearts God had touched. But certain worthless fellows said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him, and brought him no present. But he held his peace. End of chapter 10. Chapters 11 through 15 of First Samuel, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 11 Then Nahash the Ammonite came up, and encamped against Jabesh-Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite said unto them, On this condition will I make it with you, that all your right eyes be put out, and I will lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days' respite, 
that we may send messengers unto all the borders of Israel. And then, if there be none to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul, and spake these words in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voice, and wept. And behold, Saul came following the oxen out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the words of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came mightily upon Saul when he heard those words, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen, and cut them in pieces, and sent them throughout all the borders of Israel, by the hand of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the dread of Jehovah fell on the people, and they came out as one man, and he numbered them in Bezek, and the children of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah thirty thousand. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh-Gilead, Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, ye shall have deliverance. And the messengers came and told the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the camp in the morning watch, and smote the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they that remained were scattered, so that not two of them were left together. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men, that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day, for today Jehovah hath wrought deliverance in Israel. Then said Samuel to the people, Come, and let us go to Gilgal, and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before Jehovah in Gilgal. And there they offered sacrifices of peace offerings before Jehovah. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12 And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice, in all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my youth unto this day. Here I am, witness against me before Jehovah, and before his anointed, Whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken, or whom have I defrauded, whom have I oppressed, or of whose hand have I taken a ransom to blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore it you? And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, Jehovah is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they said, He is witness. And Samuel said unto the people, It is Jehovah that appointed Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may plead with you before Jehovah concerning all the righteous acts of Jehovah, which he did to you and to your fathers. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto Jehovah. Then Jehovah sent Moses and Aaron, who brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them to dwell in this place. But they forgot Jehovah their God, and he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. And they cried unto Jehovah, and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken Jehovah, and have served the Baalim and the Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And Jehovah sent Jerubbabel, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelt in safety. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when Jehovah your God was your king. Now therefore behold the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have asked for. And behold, Jehovah hath set a king over you. If ye will fear Jehovah, and serve him, and hearken unto his voice, 
and not rebel against the commandment of Jehovah. And both ye and also the king that reigneth over you be followers of Jehovah your God. Well, but if ye will not hearken unto the voice of Jehovah, but rebel against the commandment of Jehovah, then will the hand of Jehovah be against you, as it was against your fathers. Now, therefore stand still and see this great thing, which Jehovah will do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto Jehovah, that he may send thunder and rain, and ye shall know and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of Jehovah, in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto Jehovah, and Jehovah sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared Jehovah and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto Jehovah thy God, that we die not, for we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have indeed done all this evil. Yet turn not aside from following Jehovah, but serve Jehovah with all your heart, and turn ye not aside, for then would ye go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For Jehovah will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased Jehovah to make you a people unto himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against Jehovah in ceasing to pray for you. But I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear Jehovah and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. Saul was forty years old when he began to reign, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul in Michmash, in the mount of Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin. And the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines, and also that Israel was had in abomination with the Philistines. And the people were gathered together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines assembled themselves together to fight with Israel. Thirty thousand chariots, and six thousand horsemen, and people as the sand, which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up, and encamped in Michmash, eastward of beth -Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves, and in thickets, and in rocks, and in coverts, and in pits. Now, some of the Hebrews had gone over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. But as for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither the burnt offering to me, and the peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines assembled themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, Now will the Philistines come down upon me to Gilgal, and I have not entreated the favor of Jehovah. I forced myself, therefore, and offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of Jehovah thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would Jehovah have established thy kingdom upon Israel for ever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Jehovah hath sought him a man after his own heart, 
and Jehovah hath appointed him to be prince over his people, because thou hast not kept that which Jehovah commanded thee. And Samuel arose, and gat him up from Gilgal unto Gibeah of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and Jonathan his son, and the people that were present with them, abode in Geba of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Michmash. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned unto the way that leadeth to Ophrah, unto the land of Shual, and another company turned the way to Beth Horon, and another company turned the way of the border that looketh down upon the valley of Zeboim, toward the wilderness. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines, to sharpen every man his share, and his coulter, and his axe, and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks, and for the coulters, and for the forks, and for the axes, and to set the goads. So it came to pass in the day of battle, that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan, but with Saul and with Jonathan his son was there found. And the garrison of the Philistines went out unto the pass of Michmash. End of chapter 13. Chapter 14. Now it fell upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison, that is on yonder side. But he told not his father. And Saul abode in the uttermost part of Gibeah, under the pomegranate tree which is in Migron. And the people that were with him were about six hundred men. And Ahijah the son of Aetub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the priest of Jehovah in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a rocky crag on the one side, and a rocky crag on the other side. And the name of the one was Bozes, and the name of the other Sinath. The one crag rose up on the north in front of Michmash, and the other on the south in front of Geba. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that Jehovah will work for us, for there is no restraint to Jehovah to save by many or by few. And his armor-bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thy heart. Turn thee. Behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto the men, and we will disclose ourselves unto them. If they say thus unto us, Tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, Come up unto us, then we will go up, for Jehovah hath delivered them into our hand, and this shall be the sign unto us. And both of them disclosed themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor-bearer, and said, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for Jehovah hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet, and his armor-bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor-bearer slew them after him. And that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor-bearer made was about twenty men, within, as it were, half a furrow's length in an acre of land. And there was a trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison, and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, so there was an exceeding great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul and Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went hither and thither. Then said Saul unto the people that were with him, Number now, and see who is gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor-bearer were not there. And Saul said unto Ahijah, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was there at that time with the children of Israel. And it came to pass, 
while Saul talked unto the priest, that the tumult that was in the camp of the Philistines went on and increased. And Saul said unto the priest, Withdraw thy hand. And Saul and all the people that were with him were gathered together, and came to the battle, and behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a very great discomfiture. Now the Hebrews that were with the Philistines as before time, and that went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel that had hid themselves in the hill country of Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So Jehovah saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over by beth -Avon. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until it be evening, and I be avenged on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted food, and all the people came into the forest, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the forest, behold, the honey dropped. But no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in the honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people, and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father hath troubled the land. See, I pray you, how mine eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if happily the people had eaten freely to-day of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For now hath there been no great slaughter among the Philistines. And they smote of the Philistines that day from Michmash to Aijalon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil, and took sheep and oxen and calves, and slew them on the ground. And the people did eat them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against Jehovah, and that they eat with the blood. And he said, Ye have dealt treacherously. Roll a great stone unto me this day. And Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people, and say unto them, Bring me hither every man his ox, and every man his sheep, and slay them here, and eat, and sin not against Jehovah, and eating with the blood. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night, and slew them there. And Saul built an altar unto Jehovah, the same was the first altar that he built unto Jehovah. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and take spoil among them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Saul said, Draw nigh hither all ye chiefs of the people, and know and see wherein this sin hath been this day. For as Jehovah liveth, who saveth Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then said he unto all Israel, Be ye on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto Jehovah, the God of Israel, Show the right and Jonathan and Saul were taken by lot, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him and said, I did certainly taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and lo, I must die. And Saul said, God do so and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? Far from it, as Jehovah liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he hath wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. Now, 
when Saul had taken the kingdom over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, and against the children of Ammon, and against Edom, and against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. And whithersoever he turned himself, he put them to the worse. And he did valiantly, and smote the Amalekites, and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that despoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, and Ishvi, and Malki Shua, and the names of his two daughters were these, the name of the firstborn, Merab, and the name of the younger, Michael. And the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaaz. And the name of the captain of his host was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. And Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. And there was sore war against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any mighty man, or any valiant man, he took him unto him. End of chapter 14. Chapter 15. And Samuel said unto Saul, Jehovah sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of Jehovah. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, I have marked that which Amalek did to Israel, how he set himself against him in the way, when he came up out of Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul summoned the people, and numbered them in Telaim, two hundred thousand footmen, and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek, and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel, when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites, and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah, as thou goest to Shur, that is before Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of Jehovah unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And Samuel was wroth, and he cried unto Jehovah all night. And Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, and it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a monument, and turned and passed on, and went down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of Jehovah, I have performed the commandment of Jehovah. And Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen, to sacrifice unto Jehovah thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what Jehovah hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, Though thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And Jehovah anointed thee king over Israel, and Jehovah sent thee on a journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of Jehovah, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst that which was evil in the sight of Jehovah? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of Jehovah, and have gone the way which Jehovah sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the devoted things, to sacrifice unto Jehovah thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath Jehovah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Jehovah? Behold, 
to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as idolatry and teraphim. Because thou hast rejected the word of Jehovah, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of Jehovah, and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship Jehovah. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of Jehovah, and Jehovah hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, Saul laid hold upon the skirt of his robe, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, Jehovah hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine, that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie, nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people, and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship Jehovah thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshipped Jehovah. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him cheerfully. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As thy sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before Jehovah in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. For Samuel mourned for Saul, and Jehovah repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. End of chapter 15. Chapters 16 through 20 of First Samuel, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 16 And Jehovah said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And Jehovah said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to Jehovah, and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which Jehovah spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto Jehovah. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab, and said, Surely Jehovah's anointed is before him. But Jehovah said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For Jehovah seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but Jehovah looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath Jehovah chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammoth to pass by, and he said, Neither hath Jehovah chosen this. And Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Jehovah hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. 
Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look upon. And Jehovah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of Jehovah came mightily upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up, and went to Ramah. Now the spirit of Jehovah departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from Jehovah troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants that are before thee to seek out a man who is a skilful player on the harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the young men, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is skillful in playing, and a mighty man of valor, and a man of war, and prudent in speech, and a comely person, and Jehovah is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass, laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul, and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor-bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took the harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed, and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. End of chapter 16 Chapter 17 Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and they were gathered together at Soko, which belongeth to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah, in Ephes dam Mim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and encamped in the vale of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was clad with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a javelin of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron. And his shield-bearer went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me, and kill me, then will we be your servants." But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants, and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man was an old man in the days of Saul, stricken in years among men. And the three eldest sons of Jesse had gone after Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. Now David went to and fro from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched grain, and these ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to thy brethren, and bring these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the vale of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with the keeper, 
and took and went as Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the place of the wagons, as the host which was going forth to the fight shouted for the battle. And Israel and the Philistines put the battle in array, army against army, and David left his baggage in the hand of the keeper of the baggage, and ran to the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the ranks of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why art thou come down? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned away from him toward another, and spake after the same manner, and the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant was keeping his father's sheep, and when there came a lion or a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant smote both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And David said, Jehovah, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and Jehovah shall be with thee. And Saul clad David with his apparel, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he clad him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his apparel, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him, and he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had, even in his wallet. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy and withal of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the birds of the heavens, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to thee in the name of Jehovah of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will Jehovah deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head from off thee and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day unto the birds of the heavens and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that Jehovah saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is Jehovah's, and he will give you into our hand. And it came to pass, when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, 
that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And the stone sank into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and with the stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou comest to Gai and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sha'araim, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. End of chapter 17. Chapter 18. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, and gave it to David, and his apparel, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and it was good in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul, with timbrels, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women sang one to another as they played, and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and this saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands? And to me they have ascribed but thousands? And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as he did day by day. And Saul had his spear in his hand, and Saul cast the spear, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because Jehovah was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him, and made him his captain over a thousand, and he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and Jehovah was with him. And when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Merab, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me, and fight Jehovah's battles. For Saul said, Let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Meholathite, to wife. And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. 
Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law a second time. And Saul commanded his servant, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servant spake those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be the king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man, and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. Now Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law. And the days were not expired, and David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full number to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michael his daughter to wife. And Saul saw and knew that Jehovah was with David, and Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul was David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass as often as they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. End of chapter 18 Chapter 19 And Saul spake to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should slay David, but Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to slay thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself in the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee. And if I see aught, I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee, ward, very good. For he put his life in his hand, and smote the Philistine, and Jehovah wrought a great victory for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, as Jehovah liveth, he shall not be put to death. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence, as before time. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter. And they fled before him. And an evil spirit from Jehovah was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the spear. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the spear into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. And Saul sent messengers unto David's house to watch him, and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou wilt be slain. So Michael let David down through the window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took the teraphim, and laid it in the bed, and put a pillow of goat's hair at the head thereof, and covered it with the clothes. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers came in, behold, the teraphim was in the bed, with the pillow of goat's hair at the head thereof. And Saul said unto Michael, why hast thou deceived me thus, and let mine enemy go, so that he is escaped? And Michael answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go, why should I kill thee? Now David fled, and escaped, and came to Samuel to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing his head over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they also prophesied. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, 
and they also prophesied. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to the great well that is in Siku, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they are at Naoth in Ramah. And he went thither to Naoth in Ramah, and the Spirit of God came upon him also, and he went on, and prophesied until he came to Naoth in Ramah. And he also stripped off his clothes, and he also prophesied before Samuel, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? End of chapter 19 Chapter 20 And David fled from Naoth and Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father, that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, Far from it, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father doeth nothing, either great or small, but that he discloseth it unto me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David sware moreover, and said, Thy father knoweth well that I have found favor in thine eyes. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as Jehovah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, to-morrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. If thy father miss me at all, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem his city, for it is the yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be wroth, then know that evil is determined by him. Therefore deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of Jehovah with thee. But if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself, for why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee, for if I should at all know that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it thee? Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me if perchance thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went out both of them into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, Jehovah, the God of Israel, be witness, when I have sounded my father about this time to-morrow, or the third day, behold, if there be good toward David, shall I not then send unto thee, and disclose it unto thee? Jehovah do so to Jonathan, and more also, should it please my father to do thee evil, if I disclose it not unto thee, and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace, and Jehovah be with thee, as he hath been with my father." And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, show me the loving kindness of Jehovah, that I die not, but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house for ever. No, not when Jehovah hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, And Jehovah will require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again for the love that he had to him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said unto him, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou wilt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone easel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send the lad, saying, Go find the arrows. If I say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them and come, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as Jehovah liveth. But if I say thus unto the boy, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, for Jehovah hath sent thee away. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, Jehovah is between thee, and me for ever. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat food. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon the seat by the wall. And Jonathan stood up, and Abner sat by Saul's side. 
but David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought, Something hath befallen him. He is not clean, surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow after the new moon, which was the second day, that David's place was empty, and Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor to-day? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city, and my brother, he hath commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he is not come unto the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own shame, and unto the shame of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore should he be put to death? What hath he done? And Saul cast a spear at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to put David to death. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, and did eat no food the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David, because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field, at the time appointed with David, and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him, and when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad, and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows, and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his weapons unto his lad, and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south, and fell on his face to the ground, and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another, and wept one with another, until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of Jehovah, saying, Jehovah shall be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed for ever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. End of chapter 20. Chapters 21 through 25 of First Samuel, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 21 Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech came to meet David, trembling, and said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed the young men to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or whatsoever there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is holy bread, if only the young men have kept themselves from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days, when I came out. The vessels of the young men were holy, though it was but a common journey. How much more then today shall their vessels be holy? So the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread that was taken from before Jehovah to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before Jehovah, and his name was Doeg the Edomite, the chiefest of the herdsmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, and is there not here under thy hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. 
And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the vale of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see, the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Do I lack madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? End of chapter 21 Chapter 22 David therefore departed thence, and escaped to the cave of Agilim. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became captain over them, and there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the stronghold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the stronghold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Hereth. And Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him now, Saul was sitting in Gibeah, under the tamarisk tree in Ramah, with his spear in his hand. And all his servants were standing about him. And Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me? And there is none that discloseth to me when my son maketh a league with the son of Jesse? And there is none of you that is sorry for me, or discloseth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me, to lie in wait as at this day? Then answered Doeg the Edomite, who stood by the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of Jehovah for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob. And they came all of them to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread, and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me, to lie in wait, as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king, and said, And who among all thy servants is so faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law, and is taken into thy counsel, and is honorable in thy house? Have I to-day begun to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me, let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knoweth nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the guard that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of Jehovah, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew that he fled, and did not disclose it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of Jehovah. And the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priests. And he slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, 
children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar told David that Saul had slain Jehovah's priests. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew on that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, for with me thou shalt be in safeguard. End of chapter 22 Chapter 23 And they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah, and are robbing the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of Jehovah, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And Jehovah said unto David, Go, and smite the Philistines, and save Keilah. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of Jehovah yet again. And Jehovah answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And David and his men went to Keilah, and fought with the Philistines, and brought away their cattle, and slew them with the great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. And it came to pass when Abiathar the son of Ahimelech fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah. And Saul said, God hath delivered him into my hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars. And Saul summoned all the people to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul was devising mischief against him, and he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Jehovah, the God of Israel, thy servant hath surely heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down, as thy servant hath heard? O Jehovah, the God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And Jehovah said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver up me and my men into the hand of Saul? And Jehovah said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, who were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbore to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness and the strongholds, and remained in the hill country in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in the wood, and Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood, and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. And that also Saul my father knoweth. And they too made a covenant before Jehovah, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Ziphites to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in the strongholds in the wood in the hill of Hakalah, which is on the south of the desert? Now therefore, O king, come down, according to all the desire of thy soul, to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him up into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of Jehovah, for ye have had compassion on me. Go, I pray you, make yet more sure, and know, and see his place where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there, for it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself, and come ye again to me of a certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out among all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul, but David and his men were in the wilderness of Ma'an, in the Arabah, on the south of the desert. And Saul and his men went to seek him. And they told David wherefore he came down to the rock, and abode in the wilderness of Ma'an. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Ma'an. 
And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul, for Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee and come, for the Philistines have made a raid upon the land. So Saul returned from pursuing after David, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place selah hama lekoth And David went up from thence, and dwelt in the strongholds of Engedi. End of chapter 23 Chapter 24 And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way, where it was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. Now David and his men were abiding in the innermost parts of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which Jehovah said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thy hand, and thou shalt do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose, and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, Jehovah forbid that I should do this thing unto my Lord, Jehovah's anointed, to put forth my hand against him, seeing he is Jehovah's anointed. So David checked his men with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. And Saul rose up out of the cave, and went on his way. David also arose afterward, and went out of the cave, and cried after Saul, saying, My lord the king! And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the earth, and did obeisance. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearkenest thou to men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that Jehovah had delivered thee to-day into my hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is Jehovah's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, though thou huntest after my life to take it. Jehovah judge between me and thee, and Jehovah avenge me on thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancients, Out of the wicked cometh forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea. Jehovah therefore be judge, and give sentence between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thy hand. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rendered unto me good, whereas I have rendered unto thee evil. And thou hast declared this day how that thou hast dealt well with me, for as much as when Jehovah had delivered me up into thy hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore Jehovah reward thee good for that which thou hast done unto me this day. And now, behold, I know that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thy hand. Swear now therefore unto me by Jehovah, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David sware unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men gat them up unto the stronghold. End of chapter 24 Chapter 25 and Samuel died. And all Israel gathered themselves together, and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Ma'an, whose possessions were in Carmel, 
and the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and the woman was of good understanding, and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. And David sent ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be unto thee, and peace be to thy house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Thy shepherds have now been with us, and we did them no hurt, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will tell thee, wherefore let the young men find favour in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thy hand, unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants, and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread, and my water, and my flesh, that I have killed for my shearers, and give it unto men of whom I know not whence they are? So David's young men turned on their way, and went back, and came and told him according to all these words. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about four hundred men, and two hundred abode by the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed at them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we went with them. When we were in the fields, they were a wall unto us both by night and by day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master, and against all his house, for he is such a worthless fellow that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste, and took two hundred loaves, and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready dressed, and five measures of parched grain, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. And she said unto her young men, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on her ass, and came down by the covert of the mountain, that, behold, David and his men came down toward her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he hath returned me evil for good. God do so unto the enemies of David, and more also, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, so much as one man-child. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted, and alighted from her ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground. And she fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, my lord, upon me be the iniquity, and let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine ears, and hear thou the words of thy handmaid. Let not my lord, I pray thee, regard this worthless fellow, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as Jehovah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing Jehovah hath withholden thee from blood guiltiness, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now therefore let thine enemies and them that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal, and now this present which thy servant hath brought unto my lord, let it be given unto the young men that follow my lord. Forgive, I pray thee, the trespass of thy handmaid, for Jehovah will certainly make my lord a sure house, because my lord fighteth the battles of Jehovah, and evil shall not be found in thee all thy days. And though man be risen up to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul, 
yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with Jehovah thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out as from the hollow of a sling. And it shall come to pass when Jehovah shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee prince over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offence of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood without cause, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. And when Jehovah shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thy handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be Jehovah, the God of Israel, who sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy discretion, and blessed be thou, that hast kept me this day from blood guiltiness, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed as Jehovah, the God of Israel, liveth, who hath withholden me from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light so much as one man-child. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and he said unto her, Go up in peace to thy house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. And it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, that his wife told him these things. And his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that, Jehovah smote Nabal, so that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be Jehovah that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept back his servant from evil and the evil doing of Nabal hath Jehovah returned upon his own head. And David sent and spake concerning Abigail, to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David hath sent us unto thee, to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself with her face to the earth, and said, Behold, thy handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hasted, and arose, and rode upon an ass, with five damsels of hers that followed her. And she went after the messengers of David, and became his wife. David also took Aenoam of Jezreel, and they became both of them his wives. Now Saul had given Michael his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, the son of Laish, whom was of Galim. End of chapter 25